Pendulous Sedge has been a valuable resource during the Wild Biome project. It's something that I collected about, well, in 2018 I looked at the bag and it keeps really well, it stores really well. And it's been a valuable resource, a valuable source of calories for snacks that I have, especially making cookies. And this plant is very, very, very easy to identify and harvest. It grows generally in woodland environments, in damp ground, and it's a sedge, so it's not a grass. It has these reed-like leaves that bend at one point and go downwards. Um, like an upside down tick and then it has droopy droopy seed heads that the seeds cling to way after it they're ripe to fall unlike grass which drops its seed very quickly um, and I forget the rhythm I think there was something you could say it was rushes around no what was it um, sedges have edges rushes around grasses have nodes all the way to the ground the thing with pendula sedge is that it is very resistant to something called ergot which often grows on grass and uh, and therefore it's a lot more safer to harvest now processing the seed is a very easy method all you have to do i found a very efficient way to do this and that is to use a food processor um, a handheld one a manual one which uh, you can easily buy it somewhere like Dunelm and you just put the seed in there a few turns 20 turns of the pulling the lever um, or the handle and then you just sieve it through a gentle breeze with two bowls just putting one into the butt putting it into the bowl and then into the other and um, until you've got as much of the chaff out as possible and then you do it again in the blender and about after two or three times you end up with this amazing little brown seed which can then be ground into flour which I use a powerful blender for you could probably use a pestle and mortar or anything that you have at hand that's capable of grinding it down into flour but yeah this I've just using it in my cookies I've been using it in everything and uh, it's just such a valuable resource and a very abundant resource if you have a habitat near you where it grows freely it just spreads and it takes over so yeah pendula said it is one of the best resources along with acorn flour that I've had during the wild biome project This is Ganoderma and nettle tea. Now Ganoderma is the artist conch that is, um, it's got some amazing medicinal qualities. I talked about it in the last video about how I'm using it to help minimize the effects of the pollution this time of year. Now it does, it does seem to be working. I usually take reishi, um, but the past couple of days or few days I have been using this instead and it, it it's, it's amazing it tastes good it feels good and um, I haven't been suffering as much when I do consume this beverage So here is some beautiful specimens of Ganoderma appellinatum, which is artist conch. Now this is a very common bracket fungus that grows in the UK. Um, most commonly I've seen it on beach, it does grow on other hardwoods as well. And it's one of, it's one of my most sought after medicinal, medicinal mushrooms in the in the wild. It's similar to reishi and if you've studied or looked up just the kind of properties that reishi has this is largely understudied but it's believed to have similar properties which is why I decided to harvest more this year. I'm running out of my stocks. It's very hard to process you have to cut it right up 
and then um, dry it out and blitz it for using as a tea. As you have seen in the videos before this, you've seen the tea that I've created and it, it, it's, it's absolutely delicious and so nourishing. And reishi is thought to have so many medicinal healthy properties that are really good for the body and Ganoderma aplanatum is similar to that. So instead of spending a fortune on reishi, I thought I would try and have a play with this and make more teas and things to use back at home. So just a few interesting facts about, well, reishi, but we're assuming for the purpose of this that Ganoderma has similar properties. Now, first of all, it can boost the immune system. And secondly, it has anti-cancer properties. So already it's such an amazing mushroom. And it could reduce fatigue and it could reduce depression. And also heart health and blood sugar. It, um, it says that um, a number of studies looking at people with both unhealthy and unhealthy levels of blood sugar and lipids found that reishi mushroom may help decrease blood sugar and increase HDL good cholesterol, which is quite fascinating because we are working with Zoe. Well, Zoe is sponsoring us during this Wild Biome project, and they're primarily interested in blood sugar and diabetes. So, those that factor alone is very special to this particular project, and it also has um, antioxidants that help protect the cells against damage. And there we have it. This is Ganoderma aplanatum. It is similar to reishi, both in family and properties. And I'm going to take this home and thoroughly enjoy it. So here we are, I found one of the wood ant nests that are in this woodland and look at the swarms. I came a bit unprepared, I forgot to do what Miles did with the uh, ice box uh, in all, like the little ice packs just to kind of make them stay still once you put them into something. But seeing as I came unprepared I might try and gather some in a bag and see if I can do anything with them. Hopefully I'll encourage them to kind of start going into the bag. But wow, they really are swarming. Such good eating, they're like, they've got formic acid in them. So, actually, this makes it easy. You just pick them off the bag. Mmm. Mm. Just pick them off the bag and eat them. Nice little snack. But the formic acid gives them this really amazing tangy flavour, a bit like, a bit like oranges. And it's one of my favourite, it's one of my favourite insects to harvest. <laughs> so I resorted to the method that takes the most work. Um, I've just scooped a load of debris in there. I'm going to take it home, I'm going to freeze it and I'm going to separate them out by hand, which if I'd have come a bit more prepared this would have been a lot easier. But there we go. I got some wood ants in my lips were a little numb from eating so many off the stick from all the formic acid. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. 
So this is the powdered Ganoderma aplanatum, the artist conked, after I've done all the processing and put it through a blender, which I didn't video because you don't want to hear that noisy thing <laughs> going constantly. Um, but I ended up with about 20 of these trays, which is kind of crazy. I didn't realise how much I'd actually gathered, but that's my year's supply probably sorted. So I've kept a few behind in the caravan and I'm going to make my daily tea out of this. I've just been getting my van ready to go away for a few months. Now it's summer now, so I'm just doing a bit of a shuffle around and things like this heater that served me well for winter is all coming out and same with my electric blanket and um, yeah, just giving it a bit of a spring summer clean and we'll be set to go in the next day or two. Since I have the van cleared out, I thought I would give you just a little tour because this is a self-build camper, self camper, so it doesn't it's not obvious that I'm actually sleeping in it, which is great for traveling and pulling up in car parks and things like that. And um, but it's just very simply made really. I uh, I created this I created this square frame which just sit straight into the back between the wheel arches and um, there's not really much to it it's just a box just a box frame kind of thing like using using some timber two by two and then I made this part that comes out and sits in here and this is where this is where my feet go at the end of the bed uh, that that easily that easily drops out and I can put it away if I want all of this space for sitting in. Now underneath we have the port cleaning essentials and a bit of mead in the back. I hide my mead back there. <laughs> and then that box in the back there is where all the cutlery and my induction hob and everything is stored. Now coming around the back, I've got my big cool box, which is where my main food store is, which slots into this gap down here. I've got my wheel chocks, they're in here, my fishing tackle gear, electronics and things, cables in there. And then I have my electric skateboard hiding in the back. And that's been very useful if I'm parked up somewhere and I just want to run to the shops or go somewhere local without moving the van from my parking space this thing will go over trails and all sorts it's got off-roading wheels on it which you've seen in previous videos and i've got one fishing rod here just a small just a small um telescopic one and then the one that i bought recently that you've seen in a previous video i've just fixed up there it does the job keeps it out the way and then i've got my table that just folds out and when that door's shut it will come across and sit over here. Now that's just my random way of telling the temperature inside the van. It's just a botch job. Does the job though. <laughs> um, but I've got this old chest, this old set of drawers that I just screwed in quickly to s serve as my clothes store and a few other bits where my, my books and stuff are stored in the bottom. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a really simple setup. This is only bolted down in two places and strapped at the front with a, with a cable strap so that I can pull it out if I really need to and use it as a normal van, which I've not really had the need to do, really. This little unit, on my previous videos, if you look at the ones to do with the ENV200, um, I fitted this inverter 
which connects up to the main battery bank through the DC to DC converter in the um, in the under the hood itself under the bonnet and um, so this is just connected to 12 volt but I can draw up to 1500 watts out the DC to DC converter that comes off the main battery bank that's underneath this underneath this car and uh, that's 24 kilowatt hours of battery power that I can potentially pull out of here and um, I've actually put some new plug sockets on here because the original ones were absolutely terrible they just the plugs just fell straight out so these are proper sockets with switches so I can turn it on and use the plugs individually etc so it's a it's not a bad little bit of kit it's it's done me well and uh, and that that powers my induction hob and anything else that I need to so there it is this is my really 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 simple camper van setup now the only thing I'm missing in here really is a shower and a laundrette and those two things are easy to come by when you're traveling on the road you can go to YHA hostels you can go to uh, some sailing clubs allow you to use their showers and there's a bunch of other places so um, I do have the opportunity to get 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 a shower get a, get the laundry done wherever I'm traveling now I did also make a makeshift shower head that I can put on a water tub on the roof and just wash myself that way which could work but I don't really or haven't really had to use it so this is the pine pollen that I've been collecting all these catkins, not catkins, um, flowers that you saw me gathering in a previous video, I've let them sit on a piece of greaseproof paper. Prague of Edible Leeds suggested this and it works really well. You can see that the flowers have opened up and they, uh, they're um, dropping all the pollen in this, in this tray. And after putting it through a sieve, I've been I've collected this much so far I won't have a lot um, but there's a little bit to play with and mess around with it's said that it's um, it's got anti-aging properties it treats various health conditions and it also boosts testosterone so it's an amazing it's an amazing resource that is really worth gathering if the season is in. Now I didn't get as much as I wanted to this year because I missed the prime time to harvest the flowers but this is enough to mess around with. I should have double this after I finished processing. Look at the way this moves. It, I found it absolutely fascinating. It's like desert sand in the way that it just falls off the spoon and moves around. So this is how much I gathered in the end. I've got about three quarters of a jar full. Amazing, amazing resource. And I was looking up how much to dose with pine pollen and apparently it's only one teaspoon, up to one teaspoon twice a day. So the amount that I've got here will last quite a long time. I absolutely love the color and, the, and just the way that it moves is just amazing stuff. Now not only does it help with testosterone, it's also good for women with um, PMS symptoms, so like mood swings and cramps, it's supposedly good with that too. Now what I'm about to do with it next is to take this back up to the house and put it in the freezer because apparently that cracks the pollen grains and makes the goodness that's inside this jar more bioavailable. Wow, it's been a busy day. I've been getting ready to go away for the weekend, not weekend, for a few weeks, um, just for the end of the Wild Biome project. I've been busy getting the van sorted, um, getting the bedding done, and also processing a final few bits. Finally got my next batch of acorn flour ready and dried. And yeah, it's just been it's just been a bit busy, and it's been just over two months 
since uh, I've started the diet and I've actually I took my measurements about uh, a few days ago and it was quite interesting I've lost about 15 kilos since I started so maybe I was a little bit over um, but it was mostly winter weight now my trousers I need to wear a belt to keep them up <laughs> but no I feel good I'm in a good weight as you can see anyway and yeah I'm just going it's time to go and relax and and do so and and rest for tomorrow so I'll either be leaving tomorrow or Thursday and I also ended up getting some more crayfish yesterday I didn't have time to film it but I had seven crayfish to feast on and uh, so it was a nice nice meal so I've only got one month to go now until the end of the wild biome project I feel like I'm in full rhythm now with my diet I have been since maybe the first couple of weeks I started to find a rhythm and the diet's changing as you can see I've been eating different things than I used to be and I've no longer got any more St George mushrooms so it's um, I'm going down to the coast where I'm hopefully going to be doing some mackerel fishing and some other things and just feasting off what is near the coast for a few weeks until the end of the biome project when I'll come back week, a week before because I have to put my sensor in and eat those disgusting muffins again which I didn't video at the start so I don't think I can't remember I did manage to squeeze one more video in before I do head away I'm going to try and keep up the pace of videos if I can it's going to be a little bit trickier when I'm traveling because I have to work with a laptop in the van and hope that I find a good connection to upload so we shall see how that goes I'm sure I'll be able to manage one a week or something so um, yeah for now it's time to relax, rest and I will speak to you all again soon.